Hello, I'm Martijn Graat and this is Does Logistics Matter? A podcast on trends and innovations in supply chain and logistics. Answering yes to the question today is Noor Shoki, co-founder and CEO of SoftTech Technologies Group. In this episode, we talk about what artificial intelligence is, how it can be used to address challenges in the logistics industry today, how Normalife optimizes route planning based on AI, and Noor looks into his crystal ball and shares his vision of an AI-driven future. Please enjoy my conversation with Noor Shoki. Noor, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Um, Noor, the first question in this uh, podcast is always the same. And that question is, of course, does logistics matter? Well, I guess I would say we cannot live without it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. So it's not just a matter of whether it matters or not, or whether it's important or not. I guess it's 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 absolutely crucial for our survival. It is. Um, how did you uh, end up working in logistics? Well, actually, I come from a technical background, from a technology background. I'm yeah. not I'm not a logistics guy. Mm-hmm. Um, my passion and and life is around technology and software development and AI. Mm-hmm. Um, I was born and raised in in Egypt. I'm Egyptian Austrian, and uh, moved on to Germany where I did my studies and in computer science. And uh, following that, I did my uh, master's degree in software systems engineering in University College London. Yeah. And uh, with a financial stream from London Business School, and then I moved directly into becoming one of the founders of of Softec, which is the company I'm representing today. Yeah. And uh, logistics is a is a, an important uh, part of that. So so why why logistics? Why not uh, banking or or commerce or Well, originally when we founded Softec, we we originated first in the UK before we moved to the Netherlands. And uh, over there we were focusing a lot on aviation. So we've always mm-hmm. been working on transportation in a way or another. So we built solutions for the aviation industry work with air charter and and uh, private jet operators, and then we moved more into ground transportation. So we did a lot of projects in the areas of, of of fleet management and telematics, with a big focus on on emerging markets. So we worked in Middle East, Africa, Southeast Asia, Levant region, and um, this is where we gained basically our experience on transportation and mobility. And uh, we did a lot of verticalized projects in the areas of of uh, first response. So we worked with ambulance, civil defense, policing organizations to help reduce response times to, ah. to accidents and emergencies. Yeah. And this is where we start developing a passion for uh, mission-critical real-time operations where you need to be at certain points of time in a, in, in, in within time intervals very fast. And uh, we took that mentality and that experience to the logistics sector because we found that over many years, a lot of investments have been done in e-commerce and in in selling goods and in increasing yep. the production of goods, yeah. But a lot of neglection has been on on the transportation and logistics side of things. So, a lot of logistics and transportation operations are still doing things the traditional way or the classic way, if you like. And this is where we found real an opportunity to help that sector and to take our experience to that sector. And this is where we started building up AI, AI labs to build solutions for the transportation logistics sector, particularly in Europe. Yeah, well, you know, one of the most important uh, things in logistics is being at the right place at the right time with the right stuff. Correct. So. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so that's, that, that's, in a nutshell, this is what we do that, that's to help a, them do that. Yeah, that's that's quite essential. Um, I, I hear you mentioning uh, AI, and uh, there's a lot of AI in the in the in the news now, and um, many people, if they hear AI, they immediately uh, immediately think about Chat GPT. Yeah. Um, but um, a- AI is is more than just a large language model. It's not yeah. about uh, uh, hey Chat GPT, yeah. how how could how should I how should I plan my routes or uh, what time? Well, you can actually ask it what time your package is is <laughs> going to be there, maybe. But uh, y- y- you can't plan routes with Chat GPT. So can you elaborate a little bit on on um, on AI? Um, uh, well, what it is and what it can do. Yeah, as you said. ChatGPT and the likes are basically large language models that process billions and billions of data points and they generate text in human-like format. So yeah. you basically have a feeling that you're talking to somebody and uh, and uh, it's become more advanced when the context was introduced so that those data points can be put into context. Yeah. So consequently, more generative AI capabilities have been developed, which means that uh, they're able to, to come 
to conclusions and to to generate new content, for example, like writing poems or writing emails or yeah. writing legal opinions, even coming up with medical opinions, uh, yeah. generating pictures and videos and the likes. And uh, and but all of this is based on 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 the the, the inputs. And uh, when we look at uh, Google's and IBM's of the world, they are looking into how this can be developed in a, in a better, more qualitative way, where the yeah. inputs are being controlled, so that it can be deployed for very particular use cases like uh, uh, medical applications, like uh, finance, like uh, more critical applications and the like, where you really need yeah. to control the quality of the input. And then obviously there's a lot of question marks about uh, data protection and copyrights and so on, the kind of content that is being put in and that's being processed. Yeah, it's, it's um, really interesting, but there right. it, it's it's still under development. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if so, you ask so, it a question, you you sometimes well you you don't you don't always get a correct answer. Correct. So so it's super exciting. Yeah. Um, it's it's not necessarily possible to deploy that for complex situational. Um, operational and day-to-day -day tactical situations mm -hmm. where you, where these are in the mathematical world, we call them NP-hard problems. So these are basically situations where you need to do advanced combinatorics to come up with solutions. Yeah. And uh, uh, this is based on, on, on current situations. It's based on maybe um, um, certain conditions that haven't been seen before where a decision has to be made. And in the traditional world, these are being done by people that have experienced, use their gut feelings or or, yeah. or intuition to come up with the right decisions. Yes. And um, within the world of AI, there are other disciplines that need to be deployed in order to solve these kind of problems. Yes. Um, we talk about things like genetic, com genetic computing, where basically inspired by the biological world to come up with algorithms that solve these kind of so problems very fast. Yeah. Um, applications of machine learning and deep learning that are very specific to certain sectors, um, where there's a lot of data science involved in order to make sure that different data points involved are being analyzed the right way that are suitable for that particular sector, and that we're able, we're able to solve these particular issues. And um, it comes with a combination of statistics and heuristics where you are really into building algorithms, combine them with AI capabilities to solve very particular situational day-to-day -day issues for particular use cases on the ground for certain sectors like the logistics and the transportation sector. Yeah, and when you talk about al algorithms, al algorithms are, are set, programmed set models, I, I guess, that, that you, because of the algorithm, it has been taught how to act in certain situations. And then when you add uh, AI capabilities and machine learning, these models become flexible. Well, I mean, there are out of the box neural networks and 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 AI capabilities that can be reused, but uh, to solve particular use cases, very often you would need to bring in your own innovations. You need to bring in your 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 researchers and scientists to come mm -hmm. up with algorithms that are really suitable for that particular use cases. Uh, so it's not just a matter of processing data, but it's also the matter of finding the right combination of calculations and the right underlying scientific approaches in order to come up with the best solutions possible. Given that many of these many of these things today are handled by by human beings based on intuition yes. and gut feelings. Yeah. So Putting that into context and and uh, uh, finding the right combinat combinatrics to come up with those kind of solutions, it requires science and research and industry specific know how as well in order to to really solve these kind of problems. Yeah. Now I, I hear you say uh, something about uh, uh, I, I hear you say something about genetic. I hear you say deep learning. I hear you say machine learning. So uh, these are uh, terms that uh, some some of these are familiar to me some of them are not uh, can you can you connect them to to real life um, logistics situations where uh, where they are applied yeah so I mean so the reason in our world we use these kind of terminologies is that AI is very broad yeah, yeah. so AI is not really necessarily a particular technology or a particular approach so machine learning is one way of, of, of solving particular use cases D deep learning is a more uh, more elaborate way of 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 uh, 
doing end-to-end type of, of uh, learning methodologies. Um, reinforcement learning is a different way of identifying patterns within certain um, status workflows and yeah. and and and, and uh, more of finding patterns within behavioral environments rather than learning from data. Um, genetic computing is more related to building algorithms that follow the way um, biology is basically finding the the, the fittest. Ah, the the, the yeah. fittest uh, combination yeah. of of evolution. So that's why we also call it evolutionary computing. Yeah. So to make it very simple, following certain evolutionary patterns in order to get the best possible decision as fast as possible without using too much computing power. Yes. That would basically uh, be a, a minor description of, of genetic computing. Of course, there's much more into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's basically about building smart algorithms that are able to find best solutions very fast within um, within what we call problems that are highly combinatoric. Yeah. Like, for example, finding the best routes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are we, many, there many, are many, many combinations. Many, many possible combinations. Yeah. You can't compare all combinations together. What kind of algorithms can you build in order with the data points and the inputs that you have that you reach the fastest possible, as near optimal as possible solution without taking too much time, without costing too much money. Yeah. So that it makes also sense to practically implement it on the ground to make it affordable and to make it feasible. Uh, uh, Noor, route optimization is is definitely um, uh, one area where there are a lot of uh, uh, challenges for for uh, supply chain and logistics managers. Um, what other types of of, of challenges uh, uh, can be addressed with a technology like this? Yeah, I mean, in the industry, there are multiple of pain points that can be immediately addressed mm-hmm. today. So uh, predicting ETA is the right way. There's still a big issue around that. There are too many factors that affect the original estimate times of arrivals yes. throughout the day. And this is causing a huge problem for, for planners and for, for for operational people that are they're really in need to make sure that they're able to control their resources um, properly. So machine learning and deep learning can be deployed in order to estimate times of arrivals in a better way. And um, uh, other things are related to to uh, adjusting delivery time windows. So for example, there's always an issue with with really knowing, number one, how much time am I going to spend loading or unloading at a particular location, yep. queuing at a particular location based on the, the, the region, based on the location, based on the type of customer uh, or delivery point I'm delivering to or I'm picking up from. Uh, based on the type of goods or services that I that I provide, so it's always related to the location. It's also related to types of goods. It, it also related to the to the type of vehicle that I'm driving. So there are multiple factors, and and it's really difficult to predict and estimate how much time I'm spending at each location. Yeah, and this is really super critical in order to optimize the way I'm doing things. And it's not just how much time, but what is the best time to be there in order to reduce the amount of time spent on the ground. So these are all things that are very much still in the human heads, but it's impossible for for a human team to manage all of this manually. And and machine learning can really be applied very well in that that particular sector. And this is a really huge pain point that everybody is feeling today. And the the solutions are immediately available in order to to improve the way this is being done. Mm -hmm. And... um, so these are just some examples. Gartner, which is probably, if not the biggest uh, uh, research company in the area of technology yeah. for different sectors. And yeah. they have also issued multiple research reports for logistics and they've identified a number of use cases. Yeah, uh, I think 16 use cases or so. We have we have selected the ones that are most important and we've added our own. So we came up with like 10 to 12 use cases, which we think are really important and 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 where the market is ready right now to to adopt them. The problem is that everybody's talking about AI and many people don't really understand how AI can be implemented on the ground. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these AI implementations are very expensive. And if you just simplify the matter by looking at okay, so this is the problem that you have now. Yeah. And 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 this is how it can be solved. And the underlying methodologies and technical jargons around AI are not necessarily that important. 
Um, but it's really important to to communicate to everybody that how these problems can be solved. Um, other examples are, are uh, process automation across. So this would be inside the warehouse. It could be uh, the way you load your vehicles. It could be the route optimization. So there are multiple areas yeah. of process automation beyond just the routing. And they're all interconnected. So if you if you optimize each process individually, but you also interconnect them the right way to take it one level up, there are huge areas of cost savings that can be done in a time where there's economic stress and where you have shortages in drivers and shortages in planners yeah. and, and, and where the margins are getting lowered and where the customers are expecting you to be much more agile and to be able to deliver and achieve much more with the same amount of capacity that you have. Um, time slot scheduling is, is, is an area that's also a huge pain point. Yeah. How do you really yeah. schedule time slots, delivery time slots and pick up time slots in a way that will 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 serve you and also serve the customers so that yeah. you you actually are there when it's convenient for your own customers because your customer himself has also different transportation logistics providers that are serving him and they don't want everybody to come at the same time so so interconnecting different companies in a way that enables us to 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 optimize these kind of time slots and schedule them in a way that 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 will help the sector as a whole achieve more and improve the way um, operations are done on the ground. And it would also increase margins individually for for logistics companies. Um, There are other use cases which may be a little bit early, but uh, we can talk about them later. So they're more more on the Mm -hmm. futuristic side. But uh, there's also a lot of use cases now being researched around uh, autonomous driving, about electrical vehicles and... uh, and uh, drones for deliveries and so forth. So there's a lot of, if you like, sexy uh, kind yeah, of yeah, futuristic yeah. AI ideas yeah, yeah. going on at the moment. But uh, that doesn't mean that we don't have immediate uh, problems and pain points today that can be solved today with with AI. Yeah, and, I, and I'm guessing another, uh, uh, another important uh, uh, part that AI can address is uh, the sustainability uh, issues, yeah. the challenges around uh, sustainability. Because um, I mean, transportation and and, and logistics, yeah. it's an important uh, a part of the of the of the global car- carbon footprint. I mean, to a bit extent today, sustainability is no longer really just a CSR matter, but it's become a regulatory matter, and we've seen we're seeing the kind of regulations that are coming out, particularly in Europe. Um, carbon footprints need to be very carefully calculated. You need to be able to predict them very well so that you're in line with regulations. And uh, there are certain taxation as well that are that yep. are arise, and these taxations are becoming increasingly complex. And uh, this, uh, there are, there are discussions around around calculating carbon footprints per vehicle, per shipment, per organization. So different complicated ways to have them calculated and. And a lot of the optimization that is being done will result into improving that and also saving cost on that side and also becoming more sustainable, whether it's whether it's a CSR thing or actually compliance with ongoing regulations, which we are, we're still expecting more regulations to come out. So you have to be ready. So you've explained uh, several use cases, uh, 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 solutions for for different challenges. Um, what are the main challenges that uh, you are addressing uh, with your company, Softtech? So we, as AI as AI experts, we are dealing with multi- a multitude of use cases, including the ones I've mentioned. We have a very particular focus today, particularly in Europe. Uh, on, on the route optimization part. Mm-hmm. Uh, we originally started by creating, if you like, a, call it a static or a day-to-day route optimizer. So it would actually bring in all the inputs, look at the constraints, look at traffic, look at ETA predictions, and then it would come up with an optimized route with the target to reduce uh, uh, mileages driven, reduce capacity needed yeah. on the ground, and yeah. consequently reduce costs. And then we found a number of issues with that. Uh, number one, there are mu- a multitude of solutions in the market that already provide this. Yeah, many of these solutions have huge challenges in practically applying this on the ground for several reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is that it's it's either the manual process or a fully automated process. So either you follow 
the day-to-day plan that is being done by the the planning team yeah. that very experienced there's a lot of a lot of input there coming and many of them know exactly what they're doing and they do the job very well uh, but then moving completely to a free plan that is completely systemized there's always this issue of why was it done this way and why was it done this way and this debate yeah is always related to the fact that a lot of the way planning is being done is related to experience, sometimes intuition and gut feeling, sometimes situational um, situation analysis that cannot be necessarily always computerized or turned into a list of set parameters that mm-hmm. can be systemized in a way. Yeah. So a lot of, of these implementations, they get derailed because because of that transition, because you're moving from a completely human manual experience based way into a fully automated solution where you create a completely free new plan based on the inputs that that have been generated yes and um this is the first problem the second problem so the change management here is quite difficult yeah because it's either or the second issue is that once you have the plan done and even if you come if you overcome the first issue once you start executing on the ground, things don't go according to plan, <laughs> ne- right? Never. So yeah. vehicles break down. Uh, you have uh, customers that expect you to admit new orders or new shipments in the last minute after yeah. you've already made your plans. Yeah. Um, drivers don't show up. We have a huge driver shortage issue across Europe. Um, traffic issues, weather issues, cancellations. Yeah. Um, the biggest problem is going to be probably the time spent on site at different locations. So it's never yeah. according to plan. Uh, it could take longer, which disrupts your capacity, but it could also be much faster, which means you have excess capacity that could you have used if you plan better for that. Yeah. So things never go according to plan. And then you end up, even if we have those systems in place, those route optimizers, you still end up doing a lot of firefighting and replanning with your planning team on the ground. Yeah. So you didn't really solve the problem of automating things to help your planning team achieve more. Mm-hmm. You're still doing things manually, even if you have these, these route optimizers in place. Yes. So when we started piloting that on the ground, we discovered that this is not enough. And then we had to go back and we did a lot of research and a lot of scientific work in order to come up with a real-time dynamic optimizer that would that would look at what's happening on the ground. So it wouldn't just come up with a plan, it would monitor the execution of the plan and it would adapt itself. So it would change, not fully replan or disrupt the way the plan is Mm -hmm. ongoing, but it would do differential changes, small changes step-by-step on the ground based on what's happening. So if new orders come in or orders get canceled or a vehicle breaks down or you have access to additional capacity, or if any changes happen, uh, if 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 the amount of time spent on site is different than from what was originally expected, mm-hmm. then the system would be smart enough to adopt itself. For this to work, we would need access to TMS and we would need access to uh, telematic solutions. And yeah. most of, at least the kind of companies that are mature enough to start adopting AI solutions, they have a TMS in place and they have yeah. a telematic solution in place. So we need to know what capacity do you have access to, whether it's in-house or, or third-party outsourced? What kind of business rules do you have? What are your delivery deadlines yep. and so forth? What are the outstanding shipments and the locations of that shipments? And then we would look at on the ground, where are those vehicles? Yeah, where are the vehicles? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What did they deliver? Yeah. Which shipments are completed, which are still in progress, which are still to be done? And based on that, we were able to monitor if things are going according to plan, which, which never happens. So... The, the 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 planning system would be continuously updating itself and changing that's one the other one is that it it's under the control of the planners so yes. it's not either you work everything manually or you do everything on an autopilot we have created this hybrid model that would enable the planners themselves to decide which part of the operations to automate that could be yeah a region that you put on autopilot and the rest you you control it manually. It could be uh, types of vehicles. It could be part of the fleet. It could be particular customer accounts where you don't want this to be automated. You want this to be handled the old-fashioned way because there are certain things in your head 
that you don't want the system to take over. Mm -hmm. So the change management here to moving from a fully manual procedure to an automated procedure is under the control of the planning team itself. So it's not like either you do things the old way or you do it the new way. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very adaptive. And you can adapt it based on the maturity of the organization. So based on what kind of quality of data you have in place, the process you have in place, the resources you have in place. Are you ready right now to do this or not? And and we've even, one of our products is, is not on the planning side, but it prepares you to be ready for the future, which is to just look at the data that is coming from those two systems, the telematics and the, and the TMS, yeah, and, the TMS yeah. and flagging the issues. Oh, okay. So, and, and this is the first step usually that, that, that we recommend and that we, we, we go. So either you can immediately implement a, a full roadmap and use this as a first phase, or you can just to make your organization ready for the future. You just bring in the, 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 the part of the, the AI component that would predict issues. So it would only flag to your planners or to a customer success team or to a customer service team mm -hmm. where the issues are. Where do we expect delays to happen? Where do we expect uh, uh, us to miss time windows? Where do we expect to have empty legs? Where do we expect vehicles to come back to the region or to the, yeah. to the, to the depot empty so they could be better utilized? Where do we expect excessive idling, the wee vehicle to be in a place where it doesn't know what to do and it yeah. waits for further instructions? So just to take the first step and to make this accessible to all sorts of companies, regardless of how mature they are, mm -hmm. this particular product, is, it's a, it's a sub-module of, of, of the routing part and it can be implemented separately. And we put it in place in order for you just to look at the future and to help your existing team with the existing systems that you have without major implementations yes. to achieve a little bit more by flagging where do you expect problems to happen. This will improve immediately from day one the way you do customer success, the way you serve your customers. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be late, you can you know, call and apologize or find other yeah. ways. Yeah. And also to help narrow down the areas where the planners should focus on. So yes. instead of them firefighting yeah. across the whole fleet, we narrow down only the parts where they should focus on to help them improve the work. And this will help reduce the stress that they have. It will help reduce the firefighting that they do in place and so forth. And once you have this in place, you can step-by-step step start going into a manual planning board with a very nice manual plan board that is AI driven where you can work manually with automatic recommendations that mm -hmm. are AI driven. So it's yeah. a kind of a co-pilot and, and assisting, or you can move to um, an automated planning for the entire fleet or for part of the fleet. Yeah. So this is a very particular pain point that we're solving today. Yeah. So today in a world where we have driver shortages, where we have shortages in, in recruiting good planners, where we have companies that are trying to scale, but they're not really able to scale because the unit economics, there's still an issue with, with margins. Yep. Um, we have companies that rely on third parties in order to get access to excess capacity if they run out of capacity, mm -hmm. but they're not able to predict how much capacity is needed. So they're not able to structure the contracts properly with third parties. Um, these are immediate pain points that, many, many of the players in the industry feel today. And we have immediate solutions for it. And, and it doesn't have to be a very complex um, consultancy-driven AI implementation. So these are plugins that you can integrate with your TMS and your telematic solution in order to come up with an immediate result. And then you can use this as a first step towards becoming ready for the future. And the future is that things need to be automated in a better way. There's no way around that. So, and that that first step that you're saying that 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 part of the solution that just flags um, the logistics industry is a traditional industry, yeah. and many departments operate in a very traditional way, um, and, and planners specifically, yeah. they uh, they have a lot of experience, they have a knowledge, a lot of knowledge, and they have a very strong gut feel, yeah. uh, and that's not always right. 
and and simply because their their brain ha- their brains just have limited capacity as humans we have limited capacity to to see everything and the the ai solution can see much more so is that that flagging uh, solution also a way to um um get the the uh, a planning department to trust an algorithm yeah. i i'm a strong believer that that like what happened when we started bringing in printers on the market, bringing in smartphones on the market, bringing yeah. in computers to the market. Yeah. Before that, bringing calculators to the market. AI will also be a tool that helps people. Yes. So it's not going to replace people. And um, it's just going to change the way we work because mm-hmm. now we have these capabilities in place to do things better. So those type of experiences you talk about are still very important because yes. we still need the human factor to make decisions because there are some things you just can't systemize. And and the AI capabilities that are there will help you make more use of that type of experience because you're no longer wasting time firefighting on the ground. But particularly if we talk about this example, this module, yeah. we are narrowing down your focus. Yes. So the experience you have in place, you can utilize it better because we're predicting the issues that are going to happen. So you can, from early on, deploy that experience the right way in order to prevent that from happening. So here we really empower the people that work on the ground and that have the necessary experience. And we give them the tool into their hands in order to reduce the stress that they have, reduce the amount of work that they have in order to achieve more with with less time and less stress and less effort. Yeah, and this is our job. This is basically what we're doing. They they have to they have to less focus on the more standard things, and they they get to address the really important uh, challenges in a yeah. in a planning operation that actually need a human uh, to solve it. Correct. Yeah. Um, now, if I would ask you to to uh, take your uh, crystal ball. Uh, out of your pocket and and look deeply into it. Um, w- 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 I mean, we are already talking about something that that for many people is the future. Uh, but I'm just going to ask you to look even further. Yeah. So, what's in the future for the logistics industry uh, if we look at AI capabilities? Yeah. So, as of today, we're talking about process automation. Yes. Including process automation based on forecasts or based on machine learning. On the short term. So there's still a lot of work to be done in that mm. area. Yeah. On the short term, beyond that, I think, uh, and this is complementary, there will be a lot of work in the areas of forecasting orders, forecasting shipments, forecasting capacity. That could be used on the long term for territory planning and, and strategic decisions, but mm-hmm. also on the day-to-day short term on tactical decisions, the amount of capacity needed, how much capacity is in-house, how much capacity is outsourced, how do I deploy the limited resources that I have based on forecasts and not just based on uh, yeah. the information I have today. So there will be over the next two or three years a lot of work that can be done in that area. And and uh, we're also active in that area. And, and this is one of our passion projects to to work on forecasts and linking that to the to the uh, to the routing so that we don't just mm. route based on what we know but we route also based on what we predict to happen. Yeah yeah and and we do we are doing deployments at the moment in that in that area. And uh, on the long term, buzzwords, I guess, would be autonomous vehicles, yes, uh, drones, robots that yeah. that would 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 that form new ways of of doing doing deliveries. And there will be a lot of AI work needed in order for this to work properly and and efficiently. Um, maybe not that on the long term, that much on the long term. But but uh, the electric vehicles is now also a big topic. So yeah. so electric trucks. And this will bring in new opportunities, in, especially in the routing world, where we have to start looking at how can we deploy them in a way that they can be recharged always very efficiently at the yeah. right locations. So, yeah, so this yeah, is yeah, one, of yeah. the, one of the things also that I think yeah, will makes, need a lot of work more over the next three years. So yeah. pretty much that, that, that and, and ChatGPT, although they're, they're not solving the issues that we have today, uh, or the kind of use cases that mm-hmm. I that I addressed, but large language models, they will help people on the ground uh, come up with better definitions of problems of what they need, 
the kind of inputs that we need to generate in order to put them into the systems to come up with accurate results. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of, obviously it's rubbish in, rubbish out, right? So you need yes. to, to make sure that you improve the quality of your data. Yeah. And improve the, the, the information that you have so that you can come you can utilize these AI components mm. better, uh, and ChatGPT will bring opportunities. Yeah, ChatGPT to improve. Like, yeah, to improve the assumptions and the data points that you have in order to 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 get better results out out of the kind of algorithms that I've I've explained. Yeah, and I guess also like, ChatGPT is a is a it's a it's more more or less a communication model, and there's a lot of communication going on in logistics and and supply chain operations. So. Probably a solution like that can can really help um, uh, automate a lot of the communication as well, uh, while still giving uh, customers the opportunity to ask questions. Right. And then again, these customer service representatives they can focus on on the difficult and really challenging problems, and like the standard questions can be dealt with uh, with a Chat GPT like. Uh, functionality. Absolutely, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, Noor, I'd like to uh, thank you for uh, teaching me a lot more about artificial uh, intelligence. Uh, you've um, uh, definitely uh, made my um, my vocabulary uh, richer in in, uh, in that sense. Um, uh, thank you for taking us past these uh, use cases. Um, yeah, I will be following developments with a lot of uh, interest. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you for listening to Does Logistics Matter? For more on trends and innovation in supply chain and logistics, visit our blog at logisticsmatter.com. If you want to be a guest on this podcast, please send an email to podcast at logisticsmatter.com. This podcast was produced by Dimitri Vleugel. The music is based on a sample by Ruggerman and produced by Michael Spengler. This episode was supported by SoftTech Technologies Group. SoftTech is a tech company and leading intelligence and visibility solution provider for commercial fleets, last mile operations, logistics, transportation, and emergency command and control. With Normalive, SoftTech optimizes express transport planning. Normalive is a real-time dynamic live routing algorithm enabling you to put your entire express transport planning operation on autopilot. It also optimizes pickup and delivery operations of the last mile and significantly empowers same-day and immediate delivery services. For more information, visit normalive.ai. That's N-O-R-M-A-L-I-V-E dot A-I. <laughs>